Der amerikanische Hämatologenkongress, die American Society of Hematology, ist der größte Hämatologiekongress seiner Art. Es sind etwa 15.000 Wissenschaftler und Ärzte hier vor Ort. Es wird vor allem diskutiert im Bereich der Innovationen für die hämatologische Therapie. Das sind insbesondere Medikamente im Bereich der hämatologischen äh, Krebserkrankungen. Wir sehen hier ein Drittel des Portfolios abgebildet. Das heißt für uns ein ganz wichtiger Kongress. Wir sehen auch hier eine zunehmende Molekularisierung der Therapie. Das heißt auch die personalisierte Medizin hat in der Hämatologie auch äh, Einsatz genommen. Durch die besseren Verständnisse der molekularen Biologie dieser Tumore ist es auch möglich, die beste Therapie für die Patienten eben auszusuchen. Und vor allem im Hinblick auf die Bildung von Resistenzen ist es sehr wichtig, dass wir auch hier Zweitgenerationen Medikamente haben, die es ermöglichen, diese Patienten, bei denen das Medikament nicht mehr wirkt, eine Innovation nochmals anbieten zu können. Die große Frage wird sein, wie wir mit diesen Innovationen umgehen auf dem Markt. Werden diese Innovationen bezahlt werden durch die Krankenversicherer? Das ist eine ganz große Frage und die können wir nur positiv beantworten, wenn wir wirklich auch die Innovationen identifizieren. In diesem Sinn glaube ich, dass dieser Kongress ein ganz wichtiger Eckpunkt ist für die Bewirtschaftung eines Portfolios im Bereich der hermatologischen Onkologie. So, we're here at the ASH meeting, a very important hematology meeting that takes place every year uh, in December, and we wanted to go through some of the highlights of the meeting from our perspective. Um, there are three key areas that we want to focus on. The first is myelofibrosis. The reason why this area is so particularly exciting this year is because for the first time there is a product from Insight uh, called Jackify. It's a JAK2 inhibitor. Uh, it was recently approved and this is really the first therapy uh, that has been approved for myelofibrosis. So there is an incredibly uh, high degree of enthusiasm for the compound at this meeting, uh, and that product was just recently launched. We're also hearing data on some earlier stage compounds in development, uh, but Jackify's data are very, very strong at this meeting, and we would expect that to be uh, a very dominant compound uh, for uh, many years to come. In terms of another therapeutic area, uh, multiple myeloma, it's been a little bit of a quiet meeting. Um, there haven't been any new earth-shattering data, but for companies like Celgene, there have been pretty important updates. Uh, if you remember last year at this meeting, uh, there was quite a amount of concern about Revlimid's uh, ability to cause secondary malignancies uh, in first-line patients. Uh, in speaking with physicians uh, and in looking at data at this meeting, it appears that that concern has significantly diminished, um, and so that means that people are now focused on the phenomenal efficacy that's seen with that drug, and we expect first-line approvals to come in Europe and the U.S. sometime next year. Uh, there's a, also a lot of data on a number of novel agents for multiple myeloma, another drug from cell gene called pomalidomide. We see some uh, additional data on that compound at the meeting today. We expect those to be very, very strong, and that could give cell gene another uh, very good compound for this important disease. Um, and then the last area that we'd like to highlight is CML. Uh, you know that there are drugs that are very uh, effective in CML. However, there is an unmet need in that there is no drug to approve or to treat patients who are resistant to the currently approved drugs. And there is a new drug from Ariad called Panatinib. We saw data for the first time at this meeting showing that that drug works very, very well in patients who are resistant to the currently available drugs, and we're expecting that drug to be available for patients sometime next year. And the other compound that we wanted to highlight that there's very interesting data on at this meeting is from Micromet. Uh, it's called Linatumumab. And uh, today we will see data in patients with a very refractory form of uh, leukemia. And those data look very strong, and we're expecting that to be a very important drug going forward. 
So it's a great uh, ash for Celgene this year in 2011 for a lot of reasons. We've got some very interesting and exciting uh, data updates that uh, are being presented for uh, Revlimid, uh, for uh, pomalidomide as well. So uh, especially for Revlimid in the frontline setting, all of the uh, in myeloma, all the data that you see coming out is really uh, showing that the drug is great across all segments of, of myeloma patients. Uh, irrespective of age, uh, irrespective of stem cell transplant or not. So lots of market opportunity and we're looking very much forward to a frontline approval in Europe for uh, the drug. But even more exciting is we're seeing uh, more and more great data on Revlimid in other uh, disease states in uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, in the non-Hodgkin's uh, lymphomas and uh, the physicians are very excited uh, about it. Uh, Palmolidomide potential for accelerated approval is, is uh, very exciting for us for relapsed refractory uh, myeloma patients with a significant uh, unmet uh, medical need. And these products are really going to open up uh, patient segments for Celgene uh, across the world that we don't have uh, access to today. So uh, completely incremental opportunities uh, for us. Then when we look out to uh, 2012, there's just a lot of exciting things going on between frontline approval for Revlimid in Europe, accelerated approval possibilities for pomalidomide, um, continued development of that hematological pipeline. But then in solid tumors, we have Abraxam. We filed for non-small cell lung cancer in the U.S. We expect an approval for that uh, new indication uh, next year. And then we've got a lot of data coming out on uh, Aprimolast, our inflammation and immunology uh, product for uh, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, and some other indications. So it's uh, we've got a lot of fabulous momentum coming out of ASH, a lot of great momentum going into 2012 and looking forward to a, a wonderful year.